Hello, I'm Fantastic and Fantastic, and today I'm joined by the... Luxus Leyland, or the Cheerful Chip, or better known as Marvelous Melvin. And together, well, more so for him, he's <laughs> going to be showcasing his phenomenal Phenom team, which never dies in dungeons. Melvin is actually a top three ranking dungeon player in North America, so he has very fast puzzling skills, and he's able to create very budget-friendly teams for most players, as you've seen from the previous video. So... What is this dungeon you're going to be playing through, and why is it good to play multiple times? Uh, this dungeon, according to localization and pad pro tip, is called the Ultimate Dragon Research Building. And why is it good to run multiple times? It's because you might get a chance to invade mm -hmm. from uh, the pre-evolution of Tron, and she drops gems. So one of the gems she dropped for me was actually the Zahak gem, mm -hmm. which is really, really good. Some yep. other gems that she she also drops. Uh, I got Kepri gem, Mylon mm -hmm. gem, light ev light ev ultimate evolution Fagin gem. Mm -hmm. Gems that save you lots of effort. It can be potentially is the idea, and offers you said snow globes or little, little snow, snow, globes? snow globes. Unfortunately, all right, but it's better than nothing. But we get to at least showcase and witness a phenomenal phenom team, right? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, without further ado, let the good times roll. So explain your thought process for this team. Like, how does it work? Why do you want to use these subs and the playstyle for this leader? So the subs I have right now, they all co they cover all the rainbow ups because the Nom's other first part of her leader skill is that if you achieve, um, I believe it's three, right? Four. Four? You need four to trigger I something. Three. Oh, three colors you mean? Oh, yeah, colors, colors, yes. Col I thought it said dark orbs. No, no, no. No, no yes. Three colors. Any three colors. So yeah. any three colors, and she could she grants one additional combo. So, uh, she and because she's a blob team, this really helps her. Yeah. So a dual leader is actually plus two combos, which is quite significant because she needs to match four to eight or nine orbs for max damage. Is I it? I think it was eight. I think it's eight. But yeah, so she needs to match a ton of dark orbs for sizable damage and. Oftentimes, doing so will greatly compromise your combo count. But if you have full rainbow coverage, as Melvin has shown you here, you're seeing all these plus two combos. So that's going to definitely improve your so damage here's, output. Here's a great example. I'm sorry, I don't have enough mm -hmm. dark orbs to blob. Yes, well, it, it's something. But you can see that like, even if he misses a combo, which he probably won't, right? Nope. No, I missed it. Even if he misses a combo, he still overcomes the combo shield, which is great because it gives that degree of flexibility. Oh, here's the snow globes. The Tron invade in this dungeon is very, very low. I've ran this dungeon multiple times, and mm -hmm. she only invaded like two times. Two times, yeah, only two times. Mm -hmm. So not a good proposition is what you're trying to say. Well, I mean, it's still free snow globes. I still go yeah. for it. Of course, yeah. And the dungeon difficulty, you would say, is similar to what you would say? Uh, and from an arena point of view, like arena 1, 2, Do you know those uh, the, the, those dungeons we got in recently? Like uh, the Echidna dungeon, the the one where Echidna was bossing get like a Tamadra. It's like those kind oh, yeah. of dungeons. I'm not sure what to call them though. I don't know. It's like harder than arena 1. I wouldn't say that. Is it harder? I think no. it has more stuff going in it. There is. But I wouldn't say it's harder. Okay. Well, not that hard. Oh, well, similar, I guess, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm shorter. Yeah. Sounds good. So, definitely doable. And it has reasonable rewards. And how much stamina did it cost to enter? 50. And you get around 230 stamina, 230 to 60,000 stamina back. Stamina back? I mean, oh my god, I can't talk. Uh, XP. <laughs> Excellent. And it has good music. Mm-hmm. Oh, one thing worth pointing out, when you blob, you don't necessarily have to make a roll. You can blob them however you like them. 
So, but only blob them into a row if you have the dark row awakening. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, just make whatever pattern is most comfortable for your board. And his team actually does not have any dark rows anyways, so it gives him no additional advantage. Nope. So, in terms of playing, what digit do you like to use? Finger, which finger or stylus do you prefer? I prefer the thumb. And why do you like your thumb? It's much, how do you say it? Easier coverage, I would say, mm -hmm. because there's if you use your index, your your thumb's kind of in the way sometimes. Mm -hmm. And but if you use your thumb, nothing's in the way. Mm -hmm. And what kind of device do you play on? iPhone X. <laughs> so it's an appropriate. It's not a tablet, so you're able to at least reach everywhere. Yeah. And maybe Melvin has big hands too. You know what they say about guys with big hands? Big gloves. Duh. Such VDP and combos. <laughs> I know. But the best part is, the combo count requirement, or the colors, is not actually tied to your damage multiplier. So even though he only made, what was it, four combos total or something like that, you still achieve your full multiplier, which is important for when you need to follow up attack and VDP at the same time. And that's a nice extra degree of flexibility. So you can still use bicolors or tricolors for setting up those big burst boards, and then generic floors just combo like usual with a blob every now and then. With a tricolor board, you still get the additional combos because she she only mm -hmm. requires three attributes. Oh, yeah, I mean, by tri it depends if it's tricolor with hearts or not. I yeah. was, most people use tricolor with hearts. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Berserker likes to use his nose, bold strategy. So why did you choose not to use Hiei for the 99 turn Dark Skyfall buff? I have him. It's just that I feel like he's overrated. Mm -hmm. If anything, I would rather go for Esh Dark Esh Kamali because she grant gives you, although she, in significantly hey, shorter. Hey, one you got. She, uh, you wow. did. Wow. Yeah. C lucky. Yeah, also, I know. Right on time. Right in the nick of time. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, you were saying continuing about why you think Hiei is overrated. Oh yeah, I would much rather prefer what's her name, Esh Dark Esh Kamali, the one with uh, seven dark orbs enhanced because that significantly enhances your damage. Mm-hmm. And Hiei's Skyfall buff is only plus 7%, whereas Eshimali's is 15 Now, it may not sound like a dramatic difference, but it you can see it. I see a difference, I'd say, most of the time. And if you think about it, like, there are six elements that can fall down regularly, so each one has a 1 in 6 chance of appearing. And at least in my thought process, maybe it works this way as well, but when you increase it by 7%, you're going to be basically having a 1 in 4 chance, I think was the math for it. I think it was 1 in 4. 1 in 4 becomes, because what is 1 out of, one out of 6 is 16.75%, plus another 7 is about 23%, 24% chance. I think that's how it works, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, like I said, about 1 in 4. Yeah, I don't like that. Mm -hmm. So, if you have Hie and but don't have Eshkamali... He would make your life easier because he, he grant gives you more dark orbs than usual. But if you have Eshkamali, I ran him over Hiei. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, Eshkamali is bindable, mm -hmm. so you will need to use a Nicobolus assist on him. Or mm -hmm. something similar to Nicobolus. So long the assist grants Eshkamali unbindability. And or full bind immunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another thing to consider is Hiei does at least cover fire, whereas Eshimali does not grant you a new subcolor coverage by comparison. Which may or may not be important depending on what you have in your monster box. Because not everyone has Ren. Mm, I would say from the basic Ren, I would go for Reincarnate Durga. She's because uh, she's the one. She's the one she th that comes off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like Durga has synergy with the kind of rainbow esque style play skill style because she has skill charge and you're able to actually trigger that on a regular basis, which means you will have quite a consistent level of um, skill charge activating and procking, so you can charge up those inherits more easily. 
And that was a quite an ideal playthrough. Yes, it was. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's see the lucrative rewards from this dungeon to give an idea of whether or not it's worth continuing to play over time. What so, did I get? Oh, Light Fagin. So he got 268,000 experience, he got a s small snow globe, and a chance at a gem. Gems are not guaranteed, but Melvin bring has good luck here, obviously. <laughs> So, hopefully this video provides you with some inspiration as to what you can expect in the future for North America. Hopefully all have a fantastic day, and... Happy puzzling!